organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowa TV. The University of Iowa spent more on settlements than other state universities. The reason is up next. And as school comes to an end, the construction is just getting started. Stay tuned to hear how projects on Dubuque Street will impact Mayflower Residence Hall. And in sports, an Iowa basketball player transfers, and we look into how Rutgers and Maryland fit into the Big Ten. It's all coming your way at the top of the hour. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in this evening. I'm Muriel Kone. And I'm Reed Chandler. The Iowa Board of Regents announced last week how much money the three Regent Universities spent on settlements outside of court since 2011. Our own Megan Horhan reports on where that money is coming from at the UI and why this information wasn't discovered earlier. Iowa State, UNI, and the University of Iowa have paid $1.3 million in settlements altogether but the UI used two-thirds of that money on their own. Well, essentially, we are a different uh, uh, category than the other public universities in the state. Uh, we're the only one with a hospital, and so that's uh, one factor. We're also a larger university. The Associated Press requested this information from the Iowa Board of Regents last week, but no one noticed these numbers until that publication brought it to attention. Those are in... Uh, open records within the Board of Regents office. Now, I, I'm not going to say that they're necessarily publicized. The money for employee settlements at the UI can either come out of taxpayer funds or the general university budget. Moore said issues at the university hospitals and clinics does not affect tax funds directly. It depends on uh, where the person is coming, uh, where the person is employed. If they're employed, for example, in the hospitals and clinics, again, there'd be no taxpayer money involved there. However, Mr. Downer said that insurance at the hospital covers malpractice settlements only involving physicians. Those are essentially self-insured by the, the state uh, and those uh, essentially come out of tax funds. This means settlements involving nurses and other hospital employees would not be covered by UIHC. Megan Horhan, Daily Iowa TV. Governor Terry Branstad and his administration are currently under investigation from the Senate Oversight Committee for other information found by the same Associate Press Records request. And UI professors are in search of a solution for the deadly Arabian virus that causes flu-like symptoms. The virus is called MERS. It stands for Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, and symptoms can consist of fever, cough, and shortness of breath. UI professor Paul McCray told the Daily Iowan that the reason they're involved in this project is to try and understand how the virus causes disease so that we could perhaps contribute to how to develop treatment. Perlman says this research is a lengthy process and will take many more years and increased efforts to find a vaccine or treatment. Iowa City's plan to elevate North Dubuque Street to reduce the chances of fl flash flooding moves into the later stages of planning. The city has worked closely with the university to make Dubuque Street safer for students at Mayflower Hall. Daily Iron TV reporter Tanner Sigworth looks at the possible changes and how they'll benefit students. Residents of Mayflower Hall have put up with construction all year long. I get woken up by the construction starts at 7 o'clock. It's pretty much my alarm clock, so. But it's far from over. Construction on the Iowa City Gateway project is expected to begin in January and be done in two years. It aims to improve the look of Iowa City's entrance from Interstate I-80. But how will this lengthy project affect over 1,000 residents in Mayflower getting to and from campus? Project so Administrator Melissa Klo that keeps that question in mind while preparing for construction. We should have one lane of traffic in each direction while students are there. Closures will have to occur when bus traffic can be interrupted and when students are not there. While one lane traffic is sure to slow down the buses going to and from Mayflower, the finished project will improve how students walk to Mayflower by putting in a sidewalk on the east side of the street. The city will add a six foot sidewalk that will keep students from having to cross Dubuque Street in heavy traffic. We are going to look at other safety features like 
um, there are some flashing lights that can sense when someone's in the crosswalk and make drivers more aware that there's a crosswalk there. I think it would be a lot easier just because I could just stay on the side of the road and then cross at Church Street. The city is working closely with the university to finalize plans on these issues. Tanner Sigworth, Daily Island TV. 46-year-old Billy Eugene Williams was charged Wednesday for allegedly driving a lawnmower down the middle of a Des Moines street while intoxicated. Williams admitted to police he had consumed several cans of beer prior to operating the lawnmower and attempts to get to a gas station to buy more beer. Williams has been charged with operating while intoxicated and failure to have a valid license or permit while operating a motor vehicle. An ongoing domestic situation has resulted in an increase of police present at Iowa City's LeMay Elementary School. Information regarding the domestic situation is not available. However, families received an email Monday with regards to the police increase due to concerns that the situation may reach the school. School police uh, policies have been changed, mandating visitors to first check in with the school for a visitor's hall pass and prior to entering. The school is currently status as secure. Well, it's been pretty gray outside today. Reed, what happened to the beautiful weather yesterday? It was so nice I mean, out, but I'm learning, living in Iowa, I'm learning that the weather is different every single day. We'll toss yes. it over to our own Nick Fisher for a look at this weekend's weather forecast. Nick? Well, guys, after gloomy and rainy skies today, tomorrow we can expect the rain to cease, but there won't be any sun. Tomorrow morning will wake us up with a high of 59 and partly cloudy skies, and those cloudy skies will remain into the afternoon hours, climbing to a high of 63 deg degrees. Those clouds will clear in the evening with a high of 66. As we look at the rest of the week, those clouds will remain on Saturday with weekend highs in the 70s. Sunday comes with a chance of thunderstorms and the rain will linger over into Monday with a high of 77. We'll have partly cloudy skies with highs in the mid 60s on Tuesday and these temperatures will stick around for Wednesday with sunny skies in the forecast. That's all I have for you tonight. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Nick. And now it's time for this week's edition of Spotlight Iowa City. And we have our own Megan Horhand with the story. Megan? One UI grad student is exploring the inner workings of the universe. Our own Greta Miley spoke with Hannah Marlowe about her work with NASA. The vastness of our universe can seem incomprehensible, but one University of Iowa grad student, Hannah Marlowe, is spearheading research in astronomy for NASA through a fellowship she was recently awarded that will give scientists new information about outer space. Basically, wrote a proposal that said, "Hey, I'm working on this instrument. I want to keep developing it, and it would be able to get us all these cool new science things." Um, and so, lucky for me, NASA thought that was worth funding. The instrumentation she is working with, called a gamma ray burst polarometer, will help scientists better comprehend gamma ray bursts in other galaxies. A really, really, really massive star like our sun, but like way, way bigger. Um, exploding basically like at the end of its life and it creates this really powerful explosion and basically it's the brightest thing anywhere in the universe when it goes off. Marlow said her research with NASA is unique because they are monitoring the polarization of the light particles resulting from these explosions which generally only last a few milliseconds. We're seeing these individual x-rays coming into our detector and they all have like a little arrow attached to them basically and we're looking at how that arrow is oriented for all of the x-rays coming in. And so that can tell us a little bit, um, it tells us different information than we would get if we were just looking at the x-rays and ignoring how they're oriented. While the device is still only in its testing phase, Marla looks forward to launching it into orbit because of the information it would provide the science community. We would be able to say a lot about the geometry of the explosion of the gamma ray burst that we don't really know right now, um, and the, basically like the process is going on in the explosion. Still, little is known about these brilliant bursts that are galaxies away, and Marlo is excited to continue learning. Greta Miley, Daily Iowa TV. That's all I have tonight, guys. Take it away. And now for what's happening beyond Iowa. Lawyers for the Boston Marathon bomber are asking to throw out statements that Jakar Sarnayev told to authorities while he was in the hospital room suffering from gunshot wounds. The lawyers argue that authorities questioned him for 36 hours and want all of the information thrown out because he wasn't read his rights. Prosecutors are expected to respond in their own filings. This week, Nigeria's president, Goodluck Jonathan, accepted assistance from the United States to search for the missing schoolgirls 
abducted on April 14th. Meanwhile, in the U.S., the violent kidnapping has taken social media by storm. National icons like Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Cara Delevingne have all been showing their support by using the hashtag BringBackOurGirls to raise awareness and support for rescuing the girls from Nigeria's violence. You know, Muriel, Hawkeye Athletics have slowed down as the spring semester comes to a close, but that doesn't mean our Daily Iowa TV sports staff doesn't have enough to look forward to this weekend. You know, that's right. And let's send things over to Daily Iowa TV sports studio where our own Kevin Glick is standing by. Kev? Thanks, guys. A lot to get to on the show this evening. Baseball and softball in action over the weekend. And we look into Rutgers and Maryland joining the Big Ten in just a bit. But first, this just in. Iowa forward Kyle Meyer will be transferring to Eastern Florida State College for the 2014-15 season. The Alpharetta, Georgia native announcing on Twitter Thursday that he will be leaving the black and gold after just two seasons in Iowa City. The power forward saw the floor sparingly in the 2013-14 season, appearing in just 12 games for Fan Caffrey's Hawkeyes. Meyer will be leaving the Big Ten in time for transition for the conference. The traditional Midwestern Power Conference is expanding its borders out east with Maryland and Rutgers entering the conference as it enters as its 13th and 14th teams on July 1st. Daily Iowa TV Sports' Alyssa Bergamini has more on the countdown. Don't let the Big Ten name fool you because despite the conference's name, in two short months the Big Ten will expand to the Big 14. The conference was once predominantly made of Midwestern states, but it became a 12-member league with the joining of Penn State in 1990 and the University of Nebraska in 2011. And now we welcome to the Midwest Rutgers from the Big East and Maryland from the Atlantic Coast Conference. As the Big Ten turns its focus to the East, the Iowa football program will be the first to feel the impact of the change. Starting with the 2014 season, for example, Iowa will play all of the rivals in bordering states where that hasn't, um, you know, as an example, Iowa and Illinois haven't played in football since 2008. So that's a big difference, you know, locally. But overall, um, you know, the big push is for um, I expanding the Big Ten to the East Coast. And this is, you know, the fall will start that um, with, with football games with those two schools. Just a few short years ago, the possibility of expanding beyond 12 teams was ruled out, but ruled overturned, and by adding these two schools from the East Coast, the Big Ten Network is tapping into two of the largest media markets in America. You know, currently the Big Ten Network has, um, is in 52 million homes. Um, immediately next fall, when you add the, um, just the direct TV and satellite customers in the moving to those two regions of Washington, D.C. and New York City, um, all of a sudden that number goes to 60 million. See for yourself as Maryland and Iowa will compete for the first time in the same conference on Saturday, October 11th. Alyssa Bergamini, Daily Iowa TV Sports. A few more quick notes before we let you go this evening. Baseball beginning their home, their final home series of the regular season against Illinois this weekend. The Hawkeyes and Illini both entering this series this weekend with identical 27 and 17 records. No rest for the weary. Rick Heller's team enjoying no break coming off a midweek clash against the Peacocks of Upper Iowa. The Hawks taking that game 8-3. Illinois coming into this one with some momentum as well. The Illini fresh off a sweep of Big Ten rival Michigan State last weekend. Both teams seeking a favorable seed come the Big Ten tournament in a few short weeks. Softball also on the calendar this weekend at the Big Ten tournament in Evanston, Illinois. Marla Looper and company looking to build off a walk-off win in their finale at home against Ohio State. The Buckeyes taking 2-3 from Iowa, but the Hawks getting the last laugh, winning the final game of the regular season on Senior Day. Iowa's three seniors looking to make one final push to the postseason before it's all said and done. That's all for now for tonight's show. Tune in Sunday for a recap on the Diamond for both baseball and softball. Reed, Muriel, back to you at the desk right after this. We're bigger, we're deeper. And we're more experienced than we've ever been. But here's White, that's the through. Evans gets the step on the drive, score, and a foul. Now he throws it down. Well, that's all we have for you tonight, but be sure to read Friday's pages of the Daily Iowa. Finals week is just around the corner, and students share their thoughts on the use of one popular drug. And some students are walking the graduation stage early on Friday, a preview of the Reach graduation tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in this evening. We'll be back the same time on Sunday, or you can catch us anytime online at dailyisland.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. <laughs>